Okay. Hmm. Hi, morning, everyone. Morning. morning. Okay, we'll um, I'll just start by reading uh, one verse, which uh, the Lord Jesus is speaking to um, the scribes and Pharisees. Okay. Um, this is in Matthew 15 and verse 8. It says, These people draw near to me with their mouth sorry, and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Right? Uh, he's talking to the people who are there. They draw near to me with their mouth, honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And uh, I'm also, so that is Matthew um, 18, 5, right? Um, or is it 15, 8? Yeah, 15, 8. Then um, one more verse, which is uh, Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. Right? Both these verses talk about some kind of distance. <clears throat> right? Matthew 15, 8 talks about a distance where um, you know their heart is not there. Right? They are drawing near with their mouth, it says, which means that they're saying the right thing and uh, you know speaking the right things um, like uh, saying the maybe singing the right songs uh, saying the right words but the lord knows that the heart is far away which means there is some kind of distance and hebrews chapter 2 verse 1 also talks about you know uh, giving earnest heed to the things that we have heard meaning uh, whatever word that we have received the word we have heard Lest we drift away. Again, it talks about distance, you know, going far away. And um, this going far away from the heart of God is something that uh, this drift actually is something that we don't realize, right? It just happens over a period of time. It's not a, and the word drift itself, it means that uh, it's, it's not an overnight thing. You know, you get up in the morning and it's like, you suddenly you realize that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a thing which happens over a period of time, you know, day by day by day. And it's because of a series of decisions, choices that we have made, which takes us away from the heart of God. You know, that closeness that uh, uh, we experience is not there. That intimacy is, is not there. And, uh, and then suddenly we realize that hey, um, my heart is very distant from God. Um, it's not like, you know, I've, one has lived in major sin or sinful lifestyle or whatever, but there has been a drift because things have been, you know, our heart is re really indifferent to the things of God, right? So, um, so this is just to guard ourselves from it. So, how do we do that? Um, of course, Hebrews two says, "Give earnest heed to the things that you heard." Give earnest heed, meaning, you know, latch on, hold on, uh, give it importance, um, whatever in a word that we have received, and also. <clears throat> the thing is to have a close walk with God, to to keep our heart tender with Him. You know, it's just like any human relationship. Um, how do you, you know, how do you maintain that friendship or with someone? You know, you there is communication, right? There is openness, there is trust, there is transparency, right? Um, and uh, and also, you know, you you are making sure that you don't want to. You know, uh, wantedly, willingly hurt, or you know, all that is there. So, it goes into our relationship with the Lord as, as well. You know, the same dynamics, uh, the same things work. So, so just wanted us to um, just think about that and also pray on those lines, right? Let's uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for this um, exhortation, for these words, Lord, that you have declared. Um, Lord, to people around saying that, uh, yeah, it is possible to draw near with, with the right words and maybe even the right songs and maybe even the right prayers, but our hearts being far away. And Lord, it is possible to drift away, God. And uh, and uh, if we do not, if you're not careful, if you don't give earnest heed to the things that we have heard, Lord. So, um, Master, we pray that for each one of us, Lord, that we would give the earnest heed, that we would be careful, that we would be diligent, Lord, that we would be sharp in our spirit, Lord. Yes, Holy Spirit, we just ask, Lord, that you would um, that you would make us sharp in the spirit, that we will not be passive 
God, that we will not be inactive, that we will not be passive, but Lord, really, um, Lord, we, we just dedicate, consecrate our minds, Lord, Conse consecrate our hearts, Lord, our thoughts, everything to you, Jesus, that we might walk in step with you. And Lord, what a privilege it is that the God of heaven and earth has invited us uh, for this close walk, Lord, that the God of heaven and earth has invited us, um, the one who is infinitely holy has invited us for this um, close communion. And Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this um, awesome privilege, Lord. And Master, we pray that we be careful to, um, Lord, draw near with our hearts. Um, so we, we just commit ourselves into your mighty hands. And Lord, if there needs to be healing, let there be healing, Lord. I pray it'll be healing. Lord, if there needs to be a brokenness in our hearts, God, there were the hard things, oh God, parts of our life, Lord, which need to be broken, God. Spirit of God, I pray that you would do so. Uh, let the hammer of your word, Father God, um, Lord, break, Lord, into pieces the things that are hardened, oh, Father God. And I just pray that our hearts will be tender towards you, God, that our, that our ears will be open, Lord, and sensitive to what you're saying, Master. And I just pray that we'll be, Lord, uh, diligent doers of your word, Father God, even as we walk with you. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> so I just wanted to um, share that um, uh, I just made a Google sheet where you can um, write, I mean, enter your sermon topic and title, right? Um, so you, whatever you want to preach on, whatever you want to prepare on. Uh, so it's, it's, it's come to that time of the year. So you can prepare, like based on what we've been learning, right, to prepare. Uh, so it'll be a 10 minutes sermon, right? Um, so you can start preparing. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll put the uh, thing in the stream, the, the link in the stream, and you can uh, do that. Uh, E-learning students, uh, if you're watching this video, um, you can actually prepare and uh, you don't have to share the title with me. You can actually prepare it uh, yourself and put it on the discussion uh, page, right? Okay. Okay, we'll start uh, with where we left off last class, which is, um, okay, so we were saying that we were looking at different forms of delivery, right? Uh, so it can be preached in a conventional, traditional way, but also different ways of, uh, you know, sharing the Word of God. So the Word of God is, is powerful. The message is uh, authentic, real, and uh, it's not diluted in any way because we are presenting it in a different form. Okay, so maybe making it, uh, what is the idea of presenting it in a different form, right? Like uh, maybe singing it or enacting it and making it really relevant to the audience, right? So we looked at some forms where uh, the whole message is sung, you know, in a, in a rural setting, in a village setting. And why is it done? Because it's, that's something that they are used to, something that they are, they are receptive to. And, uh, you know, maybe if it's preaching, they might get tired in half an hour. But, you know, if it's, if it's something is sung, they might sit and watch for, you know, for maybe two hours, three hours, whatever. So that's the idea. So make it relevant. So the message, we, it's, it's not in any way diluted. Or we need to make sure that it's not diluted, right? Uh, compromised in any way. Okay. So different forms of delivery. So, um, you know, three basic ways. One is um, when we look at preaching. Like we're looking at, you know, methods where we declare, where we uh, say say it um, or, or verbally communicate the message. Uh, it can be preaching. Right? Preaching is it's more of an exhortation. It's an encouragement. It's a motivation. And the term preaching really means to declare, announce it, right? You're heralding, announcing it. So that is what it is. So the preacher announces, the preacher declares, the preacher's message, you know, is 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 to motivate people to action, right? Uh, it is to encourage people. It's to really lift up people from where they are to where they should be. So, um, and it's an, you know, typically if you look at, okay, let me just share the screen. Typically, if you look at uh, the style of the preacher, it's it's very lively. It's uh, it's it's because it's declarative. Um, typically, you know, there's a lot of energy, etc. Um, and it's more of 
okay what i need to do okay this is what you do it it's more of application okay rather than getting into the nuts and bolts of it you know rather than going into what or how you know the, the how could be there but rather than you know why what explanation of it okay so it is like okay you need to stop living in sin you know it can be you know a decla- declaration like that you need to stop what you're doing you know come to jesus it can be a, you know a, like a very uh, broad category you know come to jesus he will take care right of course you know you can go into some details but it's uh, it's some amount of detail that's it right um so i mean the typical stereotype is that it's more forceful it's more energetic it's more lively etc but need not be so you know um people can preach in a very um in a calm manner also right so uh, typically it's like that okay um whereas when it comes to teaching we get into the details of it right so well for example if you're talking about you know the baptism of the holy spirit you know a teacher would go into the details you know when did it happen what is the word, meaning of the word baptism you know and why does the holy spirit want to baptize and going to the nuts and bolts of it you know to reason out to uh, you know to get into the details of it you know how many times did it happen in the bible uh, how much historical background to it and why it's relevant for today and and, and all those things right um so that would be a, a teaching a teacher so naturally it is going to be a little more the pace of the teaching um is going to be slower right it's going to get into the details it could be even interactive right interactive in the terms of people asking questions and answers and so on right um so the real objective is that there should be full understanding of the particular subject right what we are talking about there should be understanding okay and see there's value in both preaching as well as teaching right there is value in in both um well some some messages need to be just or some times it just needs to be proclaimed declared people know already it's not like people don't know the 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 nuts and bolts of it you know why and how and etc people know it but there is reluctance to step into it for whatever reason right it could be discouragement it could be you know maybe some kind of a sin whatever they you know they're stuck in it so there's no there's no walk in it there's no actual walk in the truth right so that time the preaching is to just to shake people up and to encourage them motivate them to step into what they already know to be the truth right so there's you know you see that's the objective of it sometimes it is ignorance right or lack of understanding where it's like paul saying right 1 corinthians 12 he says brethren i don't i don't want you to be ignorant regarding spiritual gifts i do not want you to be ignorant and then goes into the you know details of explaining things right so it could be to bring understanding so when the truth is exposed um the holy spirit brings revelation right to the hearts and when there is revelation in our hearts and understanding is there in our minds then um, there is we are convicted right our heart takes a grip of it and there is motivation to walk in it you know we want to step into it say hey, this is for me and i can i can walk in it with that understanding so um so that's the you know the the whole objective of teaching teaching sorry to bring understanding and that understanding because of the revelation of the holy spirit you know changes completely transforms our lives right so um so that's the thing you know whether it's understanding of how to walk in faith you know so so both have their value both have their place and uh, we need both and that's why you know the fivefold ministry talks about uh, you know the teachers teaching gift which is there to to bring understanding to the body of christ to equip the body of christ so that there's edifying of the of the body right that's what ephesians 4 talks about right okay so when we prepare the message okay so we can ask ask the lord we can pray and ask the lord lord what do you want me to do right okay this is the topic but what do you want me to share how do you want me to share you know do you want me to 
get into a teaching, uh, you know, in the depths of it, or should it be just a proclamation, declaration of it, right? Um, you know, sometimes we, uh, you know, we naturally default to, like, for example, in early days, I would just naturally default to a teaching mode, right? Any message, Hebrew, Greek, okay, understand what this is, what the word means, you know. I remember, I think people must have been tired <laughs> early days. I thank God that we are so patient, right? If it's something on peace, okay, what is the meaning of peace? Old Testament, Shalom. New Testament, you know, there's all these words, Irene and all that. Um, so a simple message like peace of God, uh, you know, get, getting into that. So that's the, because that's what I, I drew value from in the early days. So I would naturally default to that, right? And then I realized, hey, that's not really helping, you know, different audiences. Uh, like, like recently went to Baloda Bazaar, like, um, so typical village, you know, uh, folks, very sincere, full of faith. And it's not really helping to do that. You know, that it's unnecessary to go into the Hebrew and Greek, right? You just say what it means and then go into it. So uh, then over a period of time, I realized that, hey, you, one needs to just ask the Lord, Okay, what is it? How do you want to do it, right? So we can ask the Lord, Lord, you know, uh, of course, you have an understanding of the audience who's going to be listening. And then you ask the Lord, uh, okay, God, what do you want me to do? The other thing is also certain parts of the message we can actually teach. And certain parts of the message you can actually proclaim, declare. Now, that is also something that we need to be sensitive to. Okay, with this section, it needs to be explained a little in depth. The other section, it just needs to be, you know, the people just need to be exhorted, right? So we can be sensitive to that, and uh, yeah, so um, so we can we can do that, right? And of course, the other thing, third one, is to prophesy. Right? It's an inspired message, um, full and full. It's a prophetic word, and uh, you know, a prophetic message, like how we said. You know, how can a message be delivered? It can be delivered in a message. It can be delivered, uh, you know, it can be a, a prophetic word, just a word, like a word of knowledge um, in the message. Or it can be a prophetic song. It can be prophetic prayer, prophetic action, etc. Right? So so this can be done um, as we are prophesying. Prophetic action is like how, um, like, if you look in the book of Acts, Agabus, prophet Agabus, he comes to Paul and he says, he removes Paul's belt and ties his hand and says, okay, this is what the Lord says. The owner of the belt, this is, how he, this is what he's going to face when he goes back to Jerusalem. So it's a prophetic act. Right? Um, I remember once when we, um, um, there's one prophet who came to APC and Sunday morning he was sharing and then um, he did a you know prophetic act in the sense he called pastor and pa called Amy uh, forward, and then he made them stand back to back with their hands, right hand lifted up, you know, with a sword, like a like carrying a sword kind of thing. And then he says, you know, this is how the Lord wants you to function. You know, you're carrying the sword and you're looking in this direction, and you're carrying a sword and you're looking in that direction. You're watching out for each other, you know, as a husband and wife. This is what, and which, whichever direction you turn. You know, the other one is covering for you. So it was a very powerful image, right? Saying, okay, I, I need to do this, you know, because there are certain areas I'm blind to, but the other person, you know, is 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 open to that, is able to visual, see that, see those things and and being alert and so on. So um, so that's a prophetic act. Yeah. It's really um, uh, trying to enact what you see in the spirit, what the Lord is you know, the message that he's putting in your heart. Yeah. Okay, so we, we have all these forms of uh, delivering. Okay. Okay. So so even in the the sermon that you're preparing, you can be mindful of that. Okay. Do I teach? Do I? Of course, we have only uh, ten minutes, right? So there's only so much you can do. Maybe three points. Uh, that's it. So you can prepare accordingly, right? Okay. Um, okay. Let's let's look at the next chapter, which is uh, ministering God's word, expecting fruit. 
okay expecting fruit meaning expecting a result you know the fruit of it now you preach okay what is it or even why before preaching what is it that you can expect is there an expectation okay based on what we are what word what message that we are sharing or are we just preoccupied with i just want to share and get done with you know maybe that could be there initially saying okay i don't want to you know i want to remember all that and i want to i don't want to forget i don't want to miss out on anything or i want to you know deliver it i don't want to you know make any mistakes i don't want to stumble on anything deliver it in a proper way you know that could be there okay but we need to go beyond that and really have the expectation um that god's word will bear fruit okay because it's a truth that he's put in your heart to share so it will bear fruit okay so what is it that we can expect okay obviously change right god's word brings about change right uh, because god's word is powerful hebrews 4:12 talks about that that is powerful alive right sharper than any any two edged sword right dividing to the spirit and soul and thoughts of the heart intents intents of the heart you know everything so uh, god's word is also like into a the word or, or the seed that is sown mark chapter 4 talks about that when it is sown it brings about fruit 30 60 100 right so so let's not uh, you know in any way disqualify ourselves or underestimate the power of god's word right because god's word will bring about fruit okay and um, and the, the lord himself you know says in um, i think it's in isaiah 55 right let's um, just read that out yeah yeah so 55 and uh, isaiah 55 and was was 10 right for as the rain comes down and snow from heaven and do not return there but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth it shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish what i please and it shall prosper in the thing for which i sent it so that is the intent with which god's word is released okay now it is twofold one is that's the potential of the word that is released okay that's the rema word that comes that is the potential it's carrying intrinsic power it's carrying intrinsic um, you know ability and so on so the lord is saying you know it shall fulfill but what is the other side of it that it needs to be received right it needs to be received with faith right because what of god talks about the fact that it did not profit them because it was not received with faith we need to understand both you know it's it's not like it's automatic okay i just shoot out some verses da 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 da, da and then you know <laughs> okay it's going to bear fruit. no it has to be received with faith okay that's the other part of it okay so yeah so we can expect change change in what change in you know all realms as a person like spirit soul and body you know, change that you know when it talk talk talks about the spirit their spirits are refreshed um, there's faith rising up and it's in the spirit man right all that is in the spirit what about the soul the mind right the thoughts are being cleared the thoughts are maybe they are able to focus better you know the word of god brings about that change change in the body right physically there is uh, healing and wholeness and you know all that we can expect okay we can also expect growth in spiritual maturity okay so the word of god does that you know uh, it edifies the person okay what is edifying it means actually the word means gr- being built up in other words it means constructive spiritual progress so there's progress right and what brings spiritual maturity is the word of god like the per- the person receives it and understands it and puts it to use and there is spiritual maturity spiritual growth right and um, so again it is it depends on how the person receives etc but we can expect that we can go with the you know we can go with the expectation yes lord ministering the word may they receive it may they walk in it and we can expect spiritual maturity okay and um, helping people to walk in victory in all areas of life helping them to possess their inheritance you know that's another main thing you know for example you know like 
messages like I, on identity and uh, the call of god and the gifts of god and and what god has done for us on the cross and what he's made available for us um through the holy spirit you know so that's um, so the holy spirit actually helps us to know what we have actually received the, our inheritance right and to be able to uh teach that to be able to bring understanding in that area we can expect that you know people will actually just blossom flourish thrive and they realize that hey their eyes being open and saying this is who i am this is what i have this is what god has done so i'm it's not i'm not without hope i can actually you know i have these resources right uh, i have this authority and it's it's wonderful to see that people rising up in authority rising up with an identity and saying this is who i am so i can actually do this right so um to helping people do that so you look at the scope of this right um well, we can expect that so every time you you are called you're invited to share or you know you can expect that saying okay god's word is going to do this right and i'm going to speak as the oracles of god okay so that doesn't mean that you have to you know put on an act you know put on a drama you know just be yourself right just be yourself right and then deliver the word communicate the word right if it is if it is your style to be dramatic be dramatic <laughs> you know if it is your style to be excited and you know fine go ahead but let it you be authentic you be you and share right okay what what other fruit can we expect we can expect that the lord will confirm the sharing of the word you know that's something that's a beautiful thing so that's the difference between you know just passing on information and communicating the word of god okay for example we see in hebrews again um hebrews 2 and verse 4 okay it talks about the salvation that was preached the message of the gospel and um it says here in verse 4 god also bearing witness both with signs and wonders with various miracles and gifts of the holy spirit according to his own will okay it's talking about you know you know how can we uh, escape if we neglect such a salvation this gospel right um so he's saying that this was how it was preached by the lord by the by jesus and confirmed to us that confirmation comes by the holy spirit you know that is something to expect that god see that's a beautiful thing when we are communicating when we are sharing the holy spirit is also doing that right the holy spirit is also speaking okay and he's speaking more fluently than you and i could he's speaking you know without any mistakes with a lot of clarity uh, in the hearts of people you know, as we depend on him so that's great reassurance for us it's it's like okay god i have my limitations but you know to the to the uh, to the ability to the you know the to the level of my ability i will share but i know that you are having a parallel conversation right with the people uh, and that's great reassurance for us so it's not just you, you know you don't have to go with that pressure oh what will i do and you know the no, holy spirit is speaking and the holy spirit is confirming the word confirming the message right with signs wonders miracles and and the other beautiful thing is his very presence right when we hear an anointed word people experience the presence of god presence of the holy spirit they know something is different he's witnessing to their hearts he's taking that word and he's confirming it to their hearts witnessing to their hearts and and i think um, that is something that no human being can do right we can reason we can argue we can say but then you know he's bringing about that witness in their hearts right okay okay i think the next thing we 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 looked at it why can we expect fruit of course god's word is designed in such a way to produce right um, and the holy spirit he brings change he he confirms it okay so what do we need to do in order to make sure that this happens uh what should i do you know what should i not do okay so the first thing is that uh, 
to be purposeful to be intentional okay um to to talk about things that god has put in your heart you know you, you either notice that okay something needs to be addressed you know to talk about it to share that and god puts that word in your heart you share it out okay don't hold back don't withhold share it with grace share it firmly you know speak the truth in love okay um and then make it relevant to the people you know this is the application part right so make it relevant to the people um to your audience okay uh, may you know the word of god is applicable to all different kinds of people different walks of life whatever profession etc but make it relevant yeah, like like just recently i was talking to the you know this this kind of audience right all villages and everything uh, and the thing is you know we we don't realize it but our background is okay urban most most cases right yeah. so you immediately thinking of okay a working professional and uh, i was talk talking about you know spending time with jesus so immediately all the examples are working prof professional you know you, you you get up you go to work you come back but i realize that it, that's not the scene here like people are working but it's a different you know different kind of work maybe they are working in the fields maybe they are working at home and there are a lot of things to be done uh, you know cooking cleaning and all that so um, so needed to slow down you know kind of rework that and make it relevant you know spending time with the lord you know how can you do that then again one more thing was realize that hey i'm saying you know read the word read the word read the word but people cannot read people cannot read and write right which means they need to listen to the word that's most of them 80% i i saw that you know, they didn't have the bible in their hands uh, i could see only you know a few people so that's another challenge okay so kind of you know you just need to make it relevant in such a way saying okay maybe one person in the household can read at a certain time and the others can listen or you know you have it on like people have smartphones um you know you make it available you know, listen to the word on youtube or, or some other thing so things like that right so when you make it relevant then we know that okay people are receiving it so when they receive it then there is fruit because you know you, it's received with faith okay uh, it's like just like in mark chapter 4 we saw that parable like some of it falls by the wayside and the lord jesus uh, the lord jesus says that okay these this is the word which is which is not really understood and it's not bearing fruit okay and you packaged it in a good way you shared it etc but it's it's not being received it's not understood and uh, the enemies takes it right and uh, so the thing is to to that is the you know the responsibility of the of the preacher or the one who is sharing the word okay and thirdly of course pray for pray for the audience you know pray that there'll be no distraction pray that uh, uh, they'll be able to receive it um, you know pray that their hearts are prepared etc right um so that something that we can do any questions here about expecting fruit um nothing um okay so oh, so like um, as a, uh, from uh, expecting fruit so uh, it's not only dependent on ourselves right cuz we can do all the things that we need to do but at the end it depends on the person who receives it yeah yeah, yeah th that is one factor the person who is receiving it are they receiving it in faith are they putting it to practice true uh, and uh, recently i was i was having this question like uh, uh, like many people were coming and listening to the word and uh, po uh, who are sharing the word they were doing their best they were doing it but uh, most of the times when uh, i know of some people from my church uh, they come they listen to the word but when they go back like like when they are in the church they receive the word they are like yeah that is very powerful i'm going to change i was like but after it's the lifestyle of same but uh, we i didn't see the 
power of the sermon that was preached working in their life or transforming them so uh, how we can take it is it the uh, mistake of with the person who was preaching or he was just preaching to make them you know uh, get goosebumps something like that <laughs> or uh, it's something to work with the congregations so that's the thing no you, you preach you declare it and everybody is happy you know and and there's a witness in their heart you know why are they responding it's not like why are they you know like in most cases you know why why am i excited i know this is truth and i know this is the possibility i know this i can change i know i can walk like that so i'm excited i'm saying wow the minute i step out you know i'm going to do that i step out and the environment i realize is the same i go into you know maybe the home the challenges everything and uh, in me there is no you know there is no strategy right there's no strategy to actually do the word i'm just i'm just saying oh, i want to do it yes i want to live like that but i'm i don't have the you know why people fail you know this is what i don't have the strategy i don't have the steps i don't have the understanding nor do i have the discipleship the support right so that's that's the other part of it you know where we have that's why the application part is very important okay hey when you go back you're going to face that mountain but there's strength inside of you and but this is what you need to do you know the reality of it yeah you will you're going to feel tomorrow morning when you wake up you're going to feel like blah <laughs> right sunday was good monday morning is like you know you're going to feel like that just prepare them right um, this is this is what you can expect but don't give up you know get back in uh, this is these are certain things that you need to do so yeah so it works both ways you know sometimes even with all that people still slip people say okay because it's they're not i don't know they're not putting it to practice whatever so it, it works both so the thing is this you know uh, it's a process a discipleship you know is a process so the the quicker people uh, you know change or you know receive and and implement and walk in it we see transformation right and uh, you know the more lethargic i am in putting the word to practice then you know the change is going to be slow the more challenges i'm going to face so that's the thing yeah <laughs> When we when we see the second point, connect the spiritual and natural. Keep your preaching and teaching relevant to the lives of the people. So uh, when we take these things uh, uh, in villages, if we come in, we take a repentance or something, any subject, like uh, teaching them, like in with parables and examples only they can understand. Like some of the people will say, people who don't know how to preach the word of God, who don't have the subject. They'll preach these examples, and they'll preach like they'll. I mean, they'll preach in discussing like that man or uh, in a yeah in in, like, in type of stories. Uh -huh. See, uh, have you have you told now? You went to this mission trip. May they 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 may, they may not know what's the Hebrew meanings, what the references, uh -huh. what it actually mean. Like like how you see this? We can we can preach like that and with stories. We, if we are taking a one verse. To make them understand, I'll narrate a story to them. To make them understand only. That doesn't mean I'm only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely, we we need to you know make it relevant. Uh, I mean, with parables and stories and real life examples. But the thing is, not at the cost of not presenting the truth. You know. So the thing is that you know I need to present the truth, saying okay, this is what God's word is. You know, this is what prayer is. This is what you know, uh, reading the word can do and present that very clearly. And in order for them to, you know, to receive, to apply it, you you share, you know, how can it be? Uh, how can it be actually done? How can it be actually carried out? You know, kind of thing. Um, so that's the thing. So the thing is, many times what people do is tell them a story. But the truth of why the story is being told, you no, know, that is not very clear. Right? So that has to be 
there has been no compromise on that that is the thing so yeah is a uh, there is a comment or statement like uh, in most of the pastors the people who can do healing they they can't preach the word of god if they if the on the time of uh, sharing the word they only talk about only the prosperity they won't tell the word actual word uh, how we can see that, that. Mm. yeah people who who can preach very well very powerful in in subject and all they won't share any prosperity gospel any of this healing miracles and uh-huh. maybe they are not uh, emphasizing the the signs and wonders and you know that kind of a thing yeah it's possible that that happens um yeah i think uh, you know as see as as people who are sharing the word we also grow over a period of time right so we also we start by okay maybe just explaining things and stopping making sure that okay i say some things without any mistake and then stopping there but then you also grow right? you also grow into you know expecting um the supernatural expecting the confirmation of god's word etc so you also grow and one has to you know when you if you look at the entirety of god's word one has to grow in all aspects all those aspects and emphasize all that you know and uh, the the time of ministry is the time when you can actually invite the spirit of god the power of god to you know so one can do that also when you when you said okay some people just to just talk about thing you know it can be certain messages or certain meetings where they are just sharing you know let's say one evening we're just talking about the power of god to be manifest that's it what's happening so we're just talking about the power of god to be manifest that's it it's not a you know it's not a teaching moment it's just saying hey come expecting that's it you know it can be that maybe uh, maybe just that for an evening so they can take like this pastor like uh, you have a you have a uh, uh, you you got this from god which you can preach very good and some other pastor can do he- do healings and miracles so what people will do is like if i want to listen the word of god in deep and all i'll come to you <laughs> if i want miracles and all, i'll go. go to the other church i according to the menu i go I choose. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, see, see, from the preacher's perspective, the Lord is our example. He preached. He taught. He healed. So he taught. You know, and the same way, you know, we see the New Testament church. They, of course, they preach. They taught. You know, Paul also taught. So, which means that um, you know, the when you look at the fivefold ministry, I might be an apostle. I might be a prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, but. i invite the power of god to do whatever you know for a teacher you know uh, where i invite the power of god to give greater understanding wisdom knowledge but also you know the other aspects of it healing signs and wonders so we i don't have to restrict god maybe you know for some person is like you know uh, god uses in a particular way it is true but that isn't i don't have to stop withhold myself many times i put a limit on myself saying okay this is what is what god's calling is this maybe he's called to be an evangelist maybe he's called to be a pastor but that should not stop me from pursuing so I desire love pursue mark chapter 4 the kind of measure that you use is what he's going to fill so that doesn't i don't have to stop myself or put a limit in pursuing the presence of god pursuing the power of god um so that's the thing right yeah so that is from the perspective of the preacher yeah but it is true like since god uses in different ways like people go okay this person is a specialist in this so i'll go and receive this person god uses in this way so i want to and that's that's fine i think yeah but as i think as as preachers we can be open expand our scope and say god you know whatever you're using me this way i'm sharing it but i want to expect your power to be present to be manifest uh, in the preaching teaching and it might not happen all the time you know so god might move you in a certain way or in a particular thing it can be an encourage mes- encouraging message and then that's fine you just leave after that right but uh, 
maybe some, some way sometimes it's just a message that god wants you to minister right from word what you know you just you're just praying prophesying you know praying over people and calling out words of knowledge and that's all that you're doing and in the end you pray and close maybe you know so exactly uh Oh, I see. Okay, I, I didn't. Uh, okay, he got uh, healed. Mm. Oh, okay. Uh. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. So. Hmm. Okay. um so yeah it's so about leading people to respond okay so what is it that you want people to respond to right it based on the message right if it is a if it is a salvation message of course we want people to respond to receiving the message inviting jesus right uh, into their hearts uh, those who haven't haven't of course so it depends on the message what is it that you want people to respond to okay so um so it's always good to um you know minister on those lines or close with the ministry time where you're giving an opportunity for people to respond to the message message that was shared okay whatever it is you know there could be in other words there is a call to action right call to action call to action to work on it maybe there are some things that need to be done maybe there's some things to be given up and we're doing it in the presence of god where right? the holy spirit is there to help help them decide help people um, you know give strength to the decisions that they are making so that's the best time you know they've received the word there's faith in their hearts invite people to respond okay so don't close without that okay and uh, uh, and what is the you know as you lean in and you depend on the holy spirit what is the lord leading you to do you know is he be sensitive you know as you're praying be sensitive um is there any word of knowledge that he's giving is there any prophetic word what is the lord showing right what is he want maybe there's some emphasis the lord just wants to wait right maybe quietly just wait to receive you know maybe receive his comfort receive his strength you know? what you know that so the response can vary there is no set way you know formula right you are being led by the spirit of god and inviting people to respond okay and um, yeah okay we'll stop here and we'll also look at um, you know different ways to get people to respond okay we'll look at it in uh, uh, tomorrow's class right okay yeah so you can uh, you know uh, okay rishan was asking about when to fill in that thing you can do it uh you can think about it uh, yeah yeah keep uh, yeah you wait, wait. when you once you decide once you choose okay this is the sermon topic that i want to prepare my sermon on and this can be the title of it just put your name and fill it i'll put the link for the sheet uh -huh. you have to present in class so that is later so we we'll just finish some more theory um some more of the notes and then you can you can prepare and present in class so when you're presenting in class what you can do is um, yeah probably we can put the camera on you or you can log in you logged in and do it okay so we can do that yeah okay okay thank you right god bless